Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. The other day I was going back through and looking at all of the different artwork and projects that I had worked on this year and I realized that I had actually used quite a lot of new art supplies and discovered quite a lot of interesting new products. So I thought it would be fun to compile a list and talk about my favorite art supplies of 2020. I guess we'll start off with how my year started off which was with this. Now I know 2020 has been a uh, interesting shall we say for all of us and my pinnacle of 2020 moment technically is started at the end of 2019 in which I got varying degrees of so sick that I then could not walk for over a month. Couldn't sit up, couldn't do any kind of artwork, all of that fun stuff. And at some point in that period of time I had a bit of a YOLO moment and decided that once I was in a bit better shape to build my dream watercolor palette. Now not all of these are new, this is sort of a compilation of what my old most used palette was. So up here there's Windsor Newton colors. I have an entire video of building this thing so if you really want to know like every single color with swatches and all of that that is in here there's an entire video on that. I will card it, link it, all of that. But from like this row down they're all Daniel Smith paints and I did end up getting a lot of these at the beginning of the year to put this dream palette together. And naturally because this is my now go-to watercolor palette it got a ton of use this year. It's so amazing to use. I love using this. Haven't had a chance to use it for a while because I've been working on other stuff. I have to essentially go out of my way to use other watercolor palettes now because I would be quite happy using exclusively this palette from now on. And as for the palette construction itself, the paints are all in individual pans, but the overall plastic main body is actually the White Knights palette that I stole and took all of the paints out of, which we will get into in a second. Yeah, I absolutely love this thing. It gets used constantly. It was definitely worth biting the bullet to do, and so this was a mega highlight of this year. Like I mentioned, I did decide to empty out my White Knights paint from that palette and sort of steal it for that purpose. Mostly it's because it actually has four rows to put paint in as opposed to most palettes that size have three and you can see there is a lot of paint and I very much needed the space. But because I decided to steal that palette for that purpose I then had all of these loose White Knight watercolor pans. Which in case you had noticed there is not a lot of great options for watercolor pan storage which is why I ended up stealing that palette in the first place. So I decided to design something which is how the first palette box came to be. This is the original this is what I designed just for myself to specifically hold all of the White Knight paint pans perfectly and I'm sure if you've been watching my videos for a while you will have seen the insane snowball effect that this palette created. But the snowball effect that this one palette created was beyond anything I thought ever was going to happen and it's completely thanks to you all. But putting this palette together in a video then turned into a whole lot of interest in the comment section about this type of watercolor storage which then turned into me developing these in different sizes as watercolor storage which then turned into the palette towers which has then turned into this somewhat mass empire of watercolor and art supplies storage. This is where it all started and it's just insane to me the year that I had because of deciding to build this one quite small plastic box. But I really had to come on here and thank you all for all of your continuous support for these videos cheering me on when I was developing these products, then deciding some of you to buy the products. It's just beyond anything I thought my year was going to be. Just outside of the fact that obviously I designed this originally for myself because I needed it as a solution, but it then turned into this thing that I was working on honestly most of the year and I had a ton of fun doing it. It is probably the only thing that kept me sane this year, having this super specific project Project. And yeah, I'm just never going to be able to say thank you enough to you all. The next thing that's been a favorite this year that's also watercolor related would be ceramic palettes. Now this one is a specifically produced paint palette. This one is just a really flat ceramic dish that I use as a palette. Now I've always really loved using ceramic palettes for watercolor and gouache. You can see these two are pretty well loved. This one has a bunch of gouache all over it and this one actually has the 40 year old watercolors that I was using. Now ceramic palettes are just really wonderful to use. I have been using them a lot outside of this year but these two specific ones I actually 
bought this year and just have generally been using them I feel a lot more this year so I had to include them in this list. I guess let's get into some more basic sketching and drawing materials. The first two things are technically the same product just in different sizes but they are the Pentel Orange pencils. Now these are absolutely one of my all-time favorite finds of this year and they were completely an accidental find for me. This was the first one that I ended up seeing online and pretty much the only reason I'm pretty sure that I bought it was because it is a 0.2 millimeter mechanical pencil. Both of them are mechanical pencils. But I'd never seen a 0.2 millimeter pencil so I decided to buy one and then when it arrived I sort of decided to pay more attention to it and realized that it had this incredibly unique lead advancement system. So basically these pencils, once you click the lead down to the end of the barrel, you never need to click it again for the remainder of that lead piece. So there's no constant clicking when you're drawing, it just advances on its own. I have no clue how this thing works, but it does work and it is amazing. They're super inexpensive, they come in a variety of pencil lead sizes, and I've been using these a whole lot this year, and normally I don't really like using mechanical pencils, mostly because I'm constantly scratching the paper because I forget to advance the lead when I'm drawing and these fix that with no problem at all. Also in the pencil category of things would be the Palomino Blackwing 602 pencil. Now I'm not entirely sure what possessed me to finally decide to buy a box of these pencils because you know spending that much money on a box of pencils is not exactly a fun time and I have been using it a lot and I do really like these. The Palomino Blackwing pencils come in three lead hardnesses. The 602 is technically the original pencil even though there is a pencil that is just called a Palomino Blackwing. The 602 is the original it is technically the hardest lead of the three and I was doing a bunch of research on them because I was not buying three boxes of incredibly expensive pencils and I just felt like the 602 was the one that I figured would suit my sketching preferences the best. The entire concept behind why this pencil ever existed and even the tagline on it is half the pressure twice the speed. So the concept behind it was that it is a pencil that can be used with a lot of varying pressure to pretty much replace a variety of different pencil hardnesses. So instead of needing like a 2H pencil to like a 3B, this is the only pencil that you need. And honestly I think that whole concept is pretty pretty true with this pencil. I don't know if I've actually used this for like an entirely pencil sketch drawing. I'm normally using this as sort of like an under sketch for a painting. I spent a decent amount of time comparing this pencil to other pencils and just trying to figure out what exactly it is that makes this pencil so wonderful in comparison to similar ones like a 3B pencil and all of that stuff and it just has a really unique lead in it. You can get it to the darkness of about a 3B but it is really a stronger lead than on a 3B pencil. It's incredibly strange and I am sort of surprised that I do like them so much because I normally sketch in like 2H, but because this has such a varying lead darkness it's making me scratch my pencil into the paper less, which then makes it easier er to erase. I don't know, I've just been really enjoying using these pencils. I know they're not everyone's favorite, but because they have been getting used so much I had to include them in this video. On to more of the pen side of things, there is this one which is the Pentel Brush Sign Pen. The easiest way that I could describe this pen would be a miniature Pentel brush pen. It has the same fiber hairs that the Pentel brush pen has, but it is much finer. Here's the original Pentel brush pen for comparison. So as you can see, there's basically just less fibers that make up the tip of the pen, but they, as far as I can tell, are the same fibers, so it writes just as beautifully. The ink isn't the same, so that might bother some people considering the ink in the Pentel brush pen tends to be quite waterproof, and this is definitely not. But if you enjoy using the Pentel brush pen for sketching, but you just might find it a bit too big at some times, then this pen is absolutely perfect for you. This is more of a disposable type of pen. It doesn't have the refillable ink cartridges, so it's not as eco-friendly, but it is a really awesome pen to use and I've enjoyed sketching with it a lot this year. Around the same time that I discovered that brush pen, I also discovered the Lamy Safari pens. I think I had a bit of a let's try it a bunch of different pens moment this year, but I'm very glad that at some point during that I discovered these. But these are fountain pens, so I'm sure 
sure a lot of the time these would be used for just completely traditional writing exercises and not drawing, but because of the ease of this pen, first of all, they're not that expensive. Like fountain pens you can spend hundreds on. These are like 20, 25 Canadian, something around that point, so not that expensive. The nibs on them are really nice. This I believe is a fine nib. They come in different nib sizes, which is awesome. They come in different colors. You can get the Lamy ink cartridges, which work really easily to put into these, or you can get a refillable ink cartridge to put your own, which is what I have in this one. But they're just a really easy fountain pen to use, and so if you like that look for your drawing, I think you would really like these. They're just a really well-made pen and fun to sketch with. The ink flow on them is great, and so I've enjoyed using these a lot for sketching this year as well. The next thing is on a new discovery this year, but I ended up using these more this year than I think I have ever in the entirety that I have owned them, and it is the Prismacolor New Pastels. So these are described as a firm pastel color stick, but the entire reason I started using these again was because I was talking about pastels in some video I did in which I think I said something along the lines of like, I like the way they look but they're incredibly messy so I don't really enjoy using them, and somehow that snowballed into I decided to try them out again to use them for some portrait work, and I just became obsessed with how easy it was to create color blends and just the smoothness with them. But after that first piece, I just kept on grabbing these. I was using them with the polychromos on top to just detail up areas and also using them with the pan pastel soft sponge cover knife things. These are amazing, especially because I wasn't doing like incredibly massive work. So these just made the application of the pastel and blending so much easier. Yeah, I'm seriously surprised at how much I ended up using pastels this year, but they also ended up creating some of my favorite pieces of the year. Another art supplies that I used a whole lot of this year would be jelly gouache. Now this is obviously an absolutely massive set, but I did decide to buy this massive set sort of because I was just really intrigued with this type of product and I really wanted to do a review on it, which I did decide to do. But then after that review, I enjoyed using them so much that I just sort of kept on reaching to use these. Yeah, but these are surprisingly great quality and just a lot of fun to use and there's just so much paint in each cup that I wasn't feeling like nervous about using these for like whatever I wanted to. So if I wanted to add some gouache or do some like insignificant gouache painting in my sketchbook or whatever, I didn't have like that weird sort of guilt that I feel like a lot of artists get of like, do we really want to be using the $20 a tube stuff for this drawing? <laughs> yeah, this was definitely one of my favorite and most fun finds of the year. Something less fun but incredibly helpful and well used for me this year would be a silicone mat. So at some point this year I decided to buy a silicone mat to help protect my desk when pour painting. I used to just cover a portion of my desk with tin foil, but constantly picking up and putting down the cups of paint, just the stickiness when you put pouring medium in paint, that stuff is like glue, it constantly would have drips on it and eventually it would start to rip and then it would just, you know, mess up your desk anyway. So I decided to buy a silicone mat and this thing has absolutely saved my desk. Other than just it being a lot more eco-friendly, you know, it is entirely reusable, it's very easy to clean off. I obviously did a ton of pour painting this year and so this is like the only reason that my desk looks nearly as clean as it does. I'm probably going to end up buying like five more silicone mats to put around different places because they just work so well. The next two things are more along the techie art supplies vein of things, but the first thing would be this iPad stand. Now I am someone that is constantly using their iPad Pro when they're working, whether that's for reference photos when working on traditional artwork, color, scheme, inspiration, whatever it might be, this thing is always in front of me. And I used to just always have my iPad on my desk because most of the cases that I have sort of had that foldable area of some sort and I would just, you know, have it propped up on my desk like that. But I realized that when I was working on different paintings, you know, it being like really down on my desk was almost too low. So I decided to go ahead and buy a stand like this. This is incredibly sturdy. It is completely adjustable and I do still definitely use it more lower to the ground when I want it propped up at like a more strange angle that maybe you can't achieve with the iPad case in itself. But this was just such a simple thing that 
that seriously improved my workflow when using my iPad for reference because, you know, it being just a few inches off of my desk meant that no part of the screen was ever like obscured by what I was working on and it was just making my life a whole lot easier. The other thing is not as easily shown, but it is this paper-like screen protector. Now I've never been someone that puts screen protectors on their devices, but the concept of the paper-like screen protector was just incredibly intriguing to me, so I decided to go ahead and buy one to try it out, and I don't think I'm ever going to go back to not using one of these. The entire concept behind the paper-like screen protectors is that it transforms the surface of your screen to something that feels more like paper. So when you're writing on this thing with an Apple pencil or some sort of pencil, it just feels so much more natural. The surface just gives the tip of the pencil a bit of resistance when you're drawing across it, so it really does feel a whole lot more like traditional drawing, which I personally prefer, so this was a great addition for me. Also because it has a bit more of a matte texture, your hand doesn't stick to it as much. I will still normally put on my smudge guard when I'm drawing for longer periods of time on my iPad, but I also have no issue using this without it, whereas before I would never be able to stand drawing with the Apple Pencil on this without the smudge guard on. Also along the tech vein of things would be my airbrush. I have an Awada Eclipse CS. Now I put off getting an airbrush for so long, pretty much the one reason that I decided to finally look into one, which was because I could get a really awesome deal on this particular one, and I'm absolutely obsessed with it now. Airbrushes are quite a common thing to look at when you are into prop making and painting. I did actually get a decent amount of opportunities to use it this year, but it's just so much fun to use, and it's seriously the quality of work that you can achieve with an airbrush is unlike anything else. Because I am like a professional, traditional artist, I would consider myself a rather decent prop painter with, you know, paint and a paintbrush. But the different effects and stuff that you can get with an airbrush are just things that you cannot achieve with a paintbrush. And it has completely upped my prop painting game. The stuff that I can do now looks seriously like it is off of a movie set. A large portion of my prop building excitement now is the thought of being able to paint it with my airbrush. And it has been one of my favorite tools to use this year, every opportunity that I've gotten a chance to use it. And the last thing, which is seriously my MVP product of the year, are my Ender 3 printers. Now I know not everyone might consider these art supplies, but I personally do considering in the context that I use them for. But I actually ended up buying both of these printers this year and they have been the closest thing to an assistant that I've had. They have seriously saved me and upped my production game. They've been instrumental in allowing me to create all of these incredibly cool things, whether that is the different art supply storage, but also just generally the props and stuff that I've built this year and I will continue to build this year and many years to come. You know that I'm obsessed with 3D printers and 3D printing, but these two machines have have seriously enabled me to create more than I ever thought I was ever going to be able to. So the first one that I ended up buying was my Ender 3 Pro. Both of them have since been heavily modified. I have videos on both of them when I got them. And the second one that I got in the middle of the year is the Ender 3 V2. They're essentially the same machine with a few slight differences between them, but I love them both. They're constantly going. They're both going right now. Like, I could not tell you how many hours both of these machines have run this year. It's been a pretty crazy 3D printing year. And those are all of my favorite art supplies of 2020. I would love to know what some of your favorite supplies are of the year, whether it is a new discovery or an old favorite. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.